the specialist family that we love you. And we just pray for you that heaven ever smile upon you. And we just want to have a glorified day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. As our service. Everyone have a program. But I have to say that changed recently because you became a man of slightly more words. And that is partly because you would not want a lot of attention on you. But, you know, I have to let you in on a little secret, Pops. Apparently. Once your way to get attention is to go up to the house. For those that need translation, my dad always called the house the house. Okay. We had our own goofy language that he created that made Rico, my dad, and I laugh. So dad, as you look down on us, I am hoping all of this attention, this celebration of you, makes you incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> Those that know me know I was extremely affectionate with my dad ever since I was a little girl. I would hug him so tight, rub his cheek, and if any of y'all knew my sister, my sister is ridiculous about cheeks. She always has to, you know, yeah. <laughs> she even does it to my nephew, Kai, you know, all the time. You know, she calls my nephew sweets <laughs> and, attack, and attack him with kisses. I would not stop until I got the, all right, Lisa, this is an, <laughs> This entanglement would usually last no more than a second, not hours. Yeah. My most recent attack of affection was a bit more subtle. I just eased into it to so begin saying to myself, oh, Dad, you being in Chicago and me in LA has really softened you. But at least three, three seconds of that, of that one, but appreciated his transparent response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those of you that knew my dad, pretty much what he was saying. I am someone who likes to use humor as a coping mechanism if you have not figured that out by now. Wow, this is tough. It does not seem real. My dad and I had a special bond. I'll stop right here for a second. I was the one who was always kind of the, the rebel in the, between me and my sister. I'm the one that kind of caused all the problems. And, <laughs> and my sister would always go up to my dad and, and would say, Dad, is Rico in trouble again? Is he going to get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and 10 times out of 10, I didn't get it. My dad, he provided, gave great advice, he made me laugh and love the game of basketball. I was just needed for that. We would talk about the upcoming NBA season with stats and draft picks. We were equally annoyed with the Jordan and LeBron comparisons because Jordan is the best hands down. My dad would say, it's a different era and how many rings does Jordan get? All right then, speaking of errors, this is a different era in our family, in our family's lives, because we have to learn how to live without, without physically being here. But we all know that my dad is here with us, all of us in spirit. Right now, that seems impossible to do. Dad, I hear you telling me Dad, I hear you telling me to treat it rough. <laughs> but no can do, big guy. No can do. I have voicemails of my dad saved on my phone. I called his phone more than once. 
could hear his voice. And obviously torture myself. <laughs> That's the humor kicking in. I told you guys about. By the way, I do wonder how long that soap is going to be activated. Where's a bill collector when you need one? <laughs> Again. So here's where she's asked me to kind of ad lib a little bit. So I'll be playing myself and I'll also be playing my sister. It says Rico, which is obviously me. I'll now be playing myself and my sister in a short scene called I'll now be playing myself. <laughs> and my sister in a short scene. Oh, this is so true. This is my sister. Rico. Rick. Rico. I would say, what? What? Lisa. You know I was dad's favorite, right? <laughs> this may not be the time or the place to tell you this, but I think it's dad you can thank for the timing of all of this. Thank you. <laughs> she asked me to take him out. <laughs> all jokes aside, you were his favorite too. I was his favorite daughter and you was his favorite son. He loved you so very much, Rico, and always wanted the best for you. Are you crying? <laughs> I, hope not. I only have a little bit more for you to read. Remember, California knows how to party. Keep it rocking, bro. Rico, if for whatever reason you are wondering how I know how Dad felt, he told me so. Duh. Maybe he didn't tell me this when Not yet of legal age to try and move the car and broke the door. <laughs> Hilarious. But you get what I'm saying, and let's be honest. As of recent, Dad shared or was willing to share his Fruit Loops with you. Nothing says love like a Fruit Loop from Dad. <laughs> he loved us both, so we got that going for us. And for that, I am forever grateful. Thank you. James Bayer, senior, was born in Chicago, Illinois on August 3, 1950. He attended the Chicago Public School. Public school system graduating from Marshall High School with a two-year basketball scholarship to Malcolm X College. While attending Malcolm X, he earned all-conference MVP honors, all-state, and another basketball scholarship to a D2 Hillsdale College. And his Hillsdale, Michigan, where he also received his Bachelor of Science degree. He was preceded in death by his mother, Zadie Reeves Grayer Bloomstein, his father, Walter L. Grayer Sr., two brothers, Walter L. Grayer Jr., Harold A. Grayer Sr., and a nephew, Harold A. Grayer Jr. Kenneth Kenneth leaves behind to church by the way. This is my family, right? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to be mine to cherish family memories. This one, Kenneth Gray, uh, Gray Jr. Um, his daughter, Salisa Gray Pompey. His granddaughter, Jada Grayer, his grandson, Kylie, two sisters, Jacqueline A. Grayer, Pamela Grayer, boy, his brother, Michael S. Grayer Sr., and a host of nieces, nephews, family, and friends. <laughs> Kenneth valued his family above all. His love and protection of family was unparalleled. He was happy spending quality time with his family. Kenny also enjoyed hanging out with his with the fellows watching sports and having If he called to his friend, he would stand by his side through the good and bad times. Back in the day, he was known for his boots on the basketball court, the dance floor, and with the ladies. <laughs> we love you today, tomorrow, and forever. We will miss your laughter, wisdom, charisma, love, and your pride for words. You're going to respect me. Uh, yeah, that's his <laughs> Respect me. <laughs> So I'm going to read 
yourself from my cousin. As you all know, my grandfather lost his legs due to health issues. About last Christmas, I was minding my business when I heard my mom and my mother crying. She had been trying to convince my grandfather to take his medicine, if my memory is correct. He didn't want to live the way he was forced to. Um, he was ready to go. I saw my mother crying and I, I had to do something. I wasn't going to let my mother lose her father on Christmas. I took the phone and simply told him that he had to keep fighting. He said okay, and he lived for almost another year. Looking back on it, I felt like maybe I was selfish. I considered maybe I was thinking too much about me and how my mother and I felt and not him. I was looking at it from, a, from my perspective. It is easy to tell someone to keep fighting through hard times, but you could never know what they are going through. I could never know how hard it was to live like that at the same time when I found out he was gone I felt like I hadn't done enough I felt like if I had done more maybe he would have had another full year I guess that's just totally irrational why put all of that responsibility on myself I wished I could have kept him here but they say the next life is better a better place all I know is he is better in a better place because he earned it. So here's to my grandfather. Because of him, I will ever be the Keister. I'm doing it. All right, for my emotional daughter. <laughs> my granddad was one of the funniest, most outspoken persons I have ever known. He did not care who you were, <laughs> if he did not like you, <laughs> or you were doing something <laughs> he did not like, he would make it known. One of my favorite stories I got told by my dad <laughs> was when he t was when he told one of the <laughs> pastor. Okay. Is when he told um, one of the uh, yeah um, <laughs> that he was that my dad got upset with somebody and my dad basically told this told somebody that if if you don't you gonna respect me or I'm gonna stick my stump so far up your whoo <laughs> you gonna respect me okay all right <laughs> how'd you clean that up. <laughs> this is one of those things, man, you know, you sit back and you look at your daughter and you'd be like, man, you say stuff like that, <laughs> you know? So, uh, another one of my favorite memories is when my granddad came to stay with my dad and, and I, we told him we were on the way just so he will be ready. This man is outside and downstairs. Mind you, he was in a wheelchair and we lived on the second floor, which means he had to have thrown his wheelchair down a set of stairs just to come down. I regret not seeing him more often, but I remember every time I did go and see him, he was always so happy to see me. And it would always put a smile on his face and my face. Every time I went over there, I had such a good time and a good laugh, but he did, he didn't let anybody and anything hold him back 
without a fight and never let anybody walk all over him. That's why he is one of the people I look up to till this day. I love you, Granddad. My favorite, rest in peace. Shut up. <laughs> I never got no spot out. Ever. Because I'm not going to shut up. But, I mean, Uncle Kenny is in a better place now. I pray for the family. Uncle Kenny was all right with me. He kept me when I was younger. I like to fight a lot. And he would always say, Kish, Kish, sit, Kathy. I don't know what we're going to do with her. Yeah. But, I'm grateful and thankful for everybody that came out today to support the family. Uncle Michael, <laughs> my main man. <laughs> you right. Baby. But, Rico, keep your head up. Say, Pam, Jack, and Pam, Rico. We know why Lisa's not here. And to all, to everyone that showed up today, um, my mother had four boys, and three of them is gone now. So it's just Pam, Pam, Jack, and myself. I look at myself. I'm the only boy left. So. Uh, I, I, you know, I used to drive over to see Kenny, and uh, he would get mad at me because I wouldn't take him out, you know, go smoke a cigarette. And Kenny, I can't do it, you know. And he went through some things, man. He, he went through some things. But uh, as I stand here and think about my brother Kenny, my brother Butch, Tony, they're all together now. And uh, all three of them play ball. It's a pretty good athlete, I think. So we are still here. We just got to look out and take care of each other. And I, everyone in here with does connect in some kind of way. We just need to show love. Not when it's always oh, too late. I should have would. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. And to everyone, thank you, thank you. And for my family, we all thank you. And we just gotta keep our head to the sky. And if God first would be okay. Amen. We go, you know, we've had a talk recently. And your dad, Kenny, he's in a bad place. And excuse me, but he's in heaven. We're in hell. What's going on in this world today? So let's just love each other. Okay, let's love each other. Show love, real love. <clears throat> With that, thank you, thank you. Hi, for those that don't know me, I'm Terry. I was, and it was my best friend. I just couldn't remember. He's up in heaven. My, my dad, who met him, um, would say he's running around the football field up there, mm -hmm. or basketball court. I, I just, I remember one time I applied to Kenny, and I felt horrible. And he left the dining room table because he, he knew I lied. And the next day, I had to go up to him and apologize. And he goes, I knew you lied. That's a okay. weird <laughs> <laughs> He had to tell me wonderful stories, like the one that Rico just talked about, telling this stuff. I know exactly who that was, because he told me this, this story after an year. I just can't believe he's gone. I love you, Penny. <laughs> Family. I just rose to say that Kenny 
was and still is my favorite brother and father. <laughs> he always will be, always have been. Um, I just regret the time that he asked us to come and see him. We were on our way coming from Mississippi and we had to get back because my husband had an appointment that day. And I just regret that we didn't get a chance to stop by to see him. That will always be something that I'll regret. But he knows that I loved him. I love your family. And you will always forever be in our hearts. Thank you so much. <laughs> He said two minutes, but you know, when a life has been shared, Mike, Mike really said that we have to show love towards one another. If you ever need love, we need it now. And I just say that continue to love one another. First, give an honest to God. Lives. I would like to thank God for allowing us to be here today in order to share this moment with Kenneth. I was his night CNA that took care of him every night. But this particular night that Kenny passed, I was supposed to be an off Saturday. But I had wound up picking up, and it must have been meant for God to allow me to be here this night. But I didn't have Kenneth in my group. Me and another CNA spoke with Kenneth prior to him passing. And I left to go on my break and he was alive. And I just thank God that I was able to speak my last words to him. And um, when I came back, it was too hard to just to take that because it was like a, a bullet to my heart. Because me and Kenneth was real close. He he loved Rhea and he told me that. You know, he had some he didn't like and he, he had some that he truly loved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was a tough cookie. <laughs> that he was. And now that I know that Kenneth was so tough, I used to try to be tough with him too. But he was like, baby girl, you can't do it. <laughs> so every time Kenneth would doze off and go to sleep, I'd sneak up behind him, I'd take my two little fingers, and I'd pop him on the back of his neck, and he'd jump up, he was like, really? That's how you gonna do me? I was like, well, you gotta wake up now. <laughs> But I just thank God for him because he was he was a he was a character. Yes, he was. We had um, probably a little bit over ten deaths in in Bria. and two of them was uh, our um, co-workers that had passed. And, and we shared so many memories and moments and conversations about death, and you know, and Kenneth told me personally, because I would take him downstairs and smoke a cigarette all the time, and we'll sit and talk while we smoke our cigarette, and, and he'll be like, you know, I'm not scared to die. And I'm like, really? You're not? And I was like, I am, but I know I love God. And, and um, at one moment, I wasn't scared, but then one moment, I was scared because, you know, we have our moments in life where we will sit down and we'll, we'll do things that's not godly. And, Sometimes we're having a back out here. Mike, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.